Hi kids! Do you have these cards at home? You have? Let's try to make a pyramid with these cards, okay? Are you ready? Let's try! Oops, the green is too strong. I guess we can't win against the wind this time. Kids, in today's story from the Bible, we will see someone came up with some plans to try to go against God's plan. But just like we cannot win against the wind with these cards, anyone who tries to go against God's plan will never work because God will not let his plan to be ruined. We are going into our new series today called God the Savior series and today's lesson is called God will send a savior. Since we are going into our new series, first let's do some recap. So far, we have seen that God promised to restore the world from sin through Abraham and his family. God promised to give Abraham three things. Do you remember what were the three things? A land, a huge family, and they would be a blessing to the whole world. That's right. So the promise was passed on to Abraham's son, Isaac, and then to Isaac's son, Jacob. And Jacob had 12 sons, and one of them was, was Joseph, who was sold by his brothers as a slave in Egypt. Do you remember him? Last week, we learned that God showed Joseph that in a few years, there would not be enough food for the people in the land. So Joseph told the king of Egypt about this. And the king of Egypt put Joseph to be in charge of the kingdom. And Joseph helped him by storing up food. And we know God was using Joseph to save God's people and people from other places from starving back at home. When there was no food, Joseph invited his father Jacob, all his brothers and all their families to live in Egypt so that they would not die from hunger. Soon, Jacob's family began to grow in Egypt. And now, 400 years later, God's people had grown into a great nation named Israel. In fact, Israel had so many people that the land was filled with them. Do you think the Egyptians liked having all these people in their land? No. When the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, saw that they were many, he got afraid they would rise up and attack him. And so he hated them. So Pharaoh tried to stop them from growing. Do you think Pharaoh can stop God's plan to save Israel to a good land to serve him? Let's see what did Pharaoh do. Kids, it's time to open your Bible. If you do not have your Bible ready with you now, you can pause this video and quickly go and get your Bible. Ready? Now, flip your Bible to Exodus, the book after Genesis. Exodus chapter 1. Look at verse 11. Let me read. Verse 11. The Egyptians put slave bosses in charge of the people of Israel and tried to wear them down with hard work. Those bosses forced them to build the cities. Whoa. So Pharaoh treated God's people like slaves. He made them work, work and work. But can Pharaoh stop God's people from growing? Remember those cards? Anyone who tries to go against God's plan will never succeed because 
God would not let his plan be ruined. So though Pharaoh tried to make them suffer, God continued to grow his people. In verse 12, but even though the Israelites were mistreated, their families grew larger and they took over more land. But Pharaoh was so evil, he told the midwives who helped mothers when they gave birth to kill all the baby boys. In Exodus chapter 1 verse 15, finally, the king called in Shifra and Pua, the two women who helped the Hebrew mothers when they gave birth. He told them, if a Hebrew woman gives birth to a girl, let the child live. If the baby boy, if the baby is a boy, kill him. Oh no, God's people were in trouble. Will Pharaoh ruin God's plan? Let's see. Let's look at verse 17. But the two women were faithful to God and did not kill the boys, even though the king had told them to. Phew, God's plan of growing his people wasn't ruined. Just like those cards, anyone who tries to go against God's plan will never succeed because God would not let his plan be ruined. So, in verse 21, we see God's people kept increasing. But, in verse 22, Pharaoh did another evil thing. He ordered that every baby boy to be thrown into the river. Oh no, Pharaoh treated the Israelites really badly and made them suffer because he wanted to stop the growth of God's people and died off eventually. But that would also mean that God's plan of restoring the world through them will not happen. Because if there were no God's people, then the world would not be restored through them as God has promised. But do you think this will stop God's plan? Remember those cards? Anyone who tries to go against God's plan will never succeed because God would not let his plan be ruined. In Exodus chapter 2, we see that God made sure a baby boy named Moses was kept alive because Moses was part of God's plan to save his suffering people. Chapter 2 A man from the Levi tribe married a woman from the same tribe, and she later had a baby boy. He was a beautiful child, and she kept him inside for three months. But when she could not, no longer keep him hidden, she made a basket out of reeds and covered it with tar. She put him in the basket and placed it in the tall grass along the edge of the Nile River. About that time, one of the king's daughters came down to take a bath in the river. While a servant woman walked along the river bank, she saw the basket in the tall grass and sent one of the young women to put it out of the water. When the king's daughter opened the basket, she saw a baby and felt sorry for him because he was crying. She said, this must be one of the Hebrew babies. In verse 9, the king's daughter wanted to keep this baby boy. And in verse 10, she named him Moses. You see, even though Pharaoh tried to stop God's people from growing, that would never work. Just like those cards, anyone who tries to go against God's plan would never succeed because God would not let his plan be ruined because God is faithful to his promises because God is faithful to his promises that's why he would send a savior named Moses to save his people from this evil king Pharaoh and to bring them out from Egypt in Exodus chapter 3, we see that when Moses grew up, 
the Lord said to Moses, I have seen how my people are suffering as slaves in Egypt, and I have heard them beg for my help because of the way they are being mistreated. I feel sorry for them, and I have come down to rescue them from the Egyptians. I will bring my people out of Egypt into a country where there is good land, rich with milk and honey. My people have begged for my help, and I have seen how cruel the Egyptians are to them. Now go to the king. I am sending you to lead my people out of his country. We will see how God will use Moses to rescue his people next time. Now kids, I want you to pause the video right now and fill out your worksheet. Do question 1. Why did Pharaoh want to stop God's people from growing? And question 2. State the three things Pharaoh tried to stop God's people from growing. Great! One last thing kids. When we see Moses was sent by God to save his people from Egypt, that reminds us of Jesus, the serpent crusher. This is because Moses is just like Jesus who will save God's people. But Jesus is a better savior because he will save his people from their slavery to sin. So now let's thank God for sending Jesus Christ to save us from our sins. Let's pray. Mighty God, you are always faithful to your promises and you will always achieve your plan. No one can stop you from achieving your plan. So may we not disobey you. We thank you that you have sent Jesus Christ to save us from our sins. Help us to put our trust in Jesus and obey him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's the end of our lesson for today. Goodbye kids!